Let's discuss the finite state machine reset condition. So we already know, we've examined how you build a finite state machine with D flip flops holding the state, the current state code. So you have a D flip flop, you got D and Q and Q bar, but this is gonna be the state, this is gonna be the current state. So this would be a current state code for whatever, whatever bit it is, we'll just call it X. And we've kind of, we really haven't looked at where what this value is going to be uh, because we've kind of uh, we've kind of glossed over the fact that the reset line isn't there. So what is the the startup value of that? So when you think about a state machine, you, you come along and you have like S0, S1, S2, and you transition between them like this, and you transition between them like this and like this. But one of the things that was very important is when you started your system, which one were you in? Were you in S0? You know, you kind of, we kind of imply that by drawing it as the first one or the top one, but why didn't you start in S1? You know, why, why didn't you start in S2? Why didn't you start in a code that wasn't even part of your state machine? So it's very important to make sure that your finite state machine is gonna start where you want it to start. So one of the things that you can do is you can control that using the reset and the preset lines of the D flip flops. So for example, if I drew the D flip flop as having an asynchronous low or asynchronous active low reset, I draw that by having a uh, inversion bubble here and a reset blows everything away. Reset will take Q and drive it to a zero. Okay? So if you had a, a state machine and you had, let's say you had two of these and you had a reset line connected to all of them, then what you could do is you could say, oh, okay. I know that I can hit the reset button and it will always drive the current state to zero and zero on those guys. So then that would be one way to say, okay, well, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna encode S0 as equal to zero, zero. And that would, that would automatically say, that is my reset state. So we call that the reset state. So the reset state is gonna be when you hit reset, it's gonna put all these codes on, by default on the outputs of the flip flops and that will be where your state machine is going to start. So it's up to you to make sure that it starts in the right location. So when you pick your state machine, if, if the resets are all wired up, one easy way to do it is just always have your start state uh, start with the code 00. zero. So if, you're always, if you always have a, a code of 00, zero or however many, just all zeros for this start, this reset state, then the reset button will take care of it. However, that doesn't work for everything. Okay? So, if you look at an example where you take a one hot counter, so we have this D and you have Q, and let's look at a three bit one hot counter. So the state machine looked like this. We had the clock coming into all of them, <coughs> and I'll just draw it like that. And then what happened was that the next state logic was the prior current state bit. And it looked like this. It was essentially kind of a, a shift register in a ring configuration. And the idea was that when you start it up, you'd have one, zero, and zero, or actually we'll just do it as zero. No, we'll do it as one, zero, zero. And then you clock it, and this becomes a zero, and then this becomes a one, and this becomes stays a zero. And this one, basically, you clock it again, you have a zero, zero, one, and the one traverses. It just goes around. So one, 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 one. One, 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 <clears throat> and that's fine. I mean, that's that's the way you design it. The problem with this is that you have a state code that's going to start. Your reset state has a one in it. So when you encode this, you said, well, I had this, you know, state diagram, and, and the code for the first state was going to be as zero is equal to one zero zero. Well, you have a one in there. So if you put active low resets on here, you do this, and then you these are all reset lines. Uh, what happens when you start up? You hit reset. Well, that flushes all the cues. It puts all the cues to a zero, and now you don't have a one in there. So now when the rising edge of a clock happens, yeah, you are shifting this bit back and forth, but it's always a zero. There was no way to insert a one in this, so the state machine is just dead. It just sits at an output of all zeros. So you have a problem where reset lines are only good if your start state has a state code of all zeros. So the solution to this is, it's quite simple, is default flip-flops also have this preset input. So it's a preset, and it's active low also. And what this does is a preset is, it's going to 
if you assert it, it's going to put a 1 on the output. Okay, so it acts the same as a reset, except that instead of driving it to a 0, it drives it to a 1. So what we would do in this situation is say, okay, I don't want to use reset on this D flip-flop. I want to use preset. So I, now I'm going, to, I'm going to draw in all the presets and resets. I'm going to say, okay, this now is where reset's going to come in. And I don't want to use the reset line on this D flip-flop. And I know that I'm going to use the preset line on this one. So what I could do is then say, so now I have the presets, I'll use that to get the one in there. So now you sit there and you go, well, wait a minute. Now I'm drawing the presets in there and I'm not using the resets. What do you do with these other signals that we've introduced? I mean, they were always there. It's just a matter of what they were tied to. So if you think about it, <clears throat> when you don't use it, you don't want it to be asserted. So that means reset, that's fine. What we're going to do is we'll have this input signal, which is reset, and we will, we will drive it to the reset line of this and the reset line of that deep flip flop. And when we press that button, it's going to put zeros on the outputs of those two deep flip flops. But this one, we don't want to use it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tie it to VCC. And what that'll do, it'll drive a logic one in there and it'll make sure that it's not ever reset. Now this preset line here is also active low. So what we can do is we can wire it down to our reset button. And when we hit that, it's going to put a 1 right here. So that's where the 1 comes from in your initial state. Okay, so that's fine, but now we have two presets that we're not using. Well, you're not going to use them, so what you do is you just say VCC here, and VCC here, and then that ties it to that. Now those presets are not being used, so you will never be in preset. So this situation is how you could say, I'm going to hit the reset button, and it will initialize to a code of 100. So that's how you can, can you modify your finite state machine to have a start state, or what we call the reset state, that has something that doesn't consist of all zeros. You know, usually the easiest way is, or most state machines, uh, are going to have a reset state which has a, a start state that has a, codes of all zeros. But it doesn't have to be. You can use the preset lines and get some other type of code. So that's the finite state machine reset condition.